Okay, we've done it. Final presentation, not without problems. So, okay, so I'm Juan Miguel Zapuela, I do a PhD at the Technical University of Munich. And the work that I will present is from me and from my colleagues Tatiana Goldberg, Strickland Birchercar, and Burka Rost at Ross Lapas Technical University of Munich, and also Lars Jules Jensen from University of Copenhagen. Good, so the thing that we have been discussing during the whole week is this isolation from NLP groups so that our efforts are finally not linked and we cannot use the efforts from the other people. Now the point that I'm going to make for the presentation is that there is also a, an isolation between the NLP people and the database curators, the biomedical databases. And we do both have in common that we, we spend a lot of effort in annotating and reviewing literature for curation uh, maybe with a, a slightly different focus, but again, we are, we are not sharing our results, our annotations. And hopefully we can have what uh, Jean is also proposing, this maybe this central way of sharing the, uh, our results that maybe we NLP people can push our annotations to the central place and also the database curators can use those results. And as a proof of concept, we developed the Logtex corpus, which, as Karin Vesper said before, we, we did this uh, originally just for the training of some machine learning methods to extract from uh, documents the relations of proteins to localizations in the cell. And then when we finally did uh, some annotations, we found that those annotations that we have of protein lo locations uh, where 42% uh, of those were novel or more detailed as compared to those uh, existing in, on Unipro. Okay, so first of all I'm going to describe what, how we annotated or what we have annotated in the corpus and that is proteins and as uh, Larry Hunter said before that we, we put into the same class protein genes and our RNAs, we removed that ambiguity and uh, uh, localize it, uh, sorry, normalize it to Uniprod. Then we also have subcellular localizations and normalize it to Go terms, and then we have organisms normalized to the taxonomy. And then for the relations, the most important one is this, the protein location relations, and also protein organisms to make the normalization of, of the proteins possible. As for the number of, abstract, uh, the number of documents is 100 abstracts. We are now also annotated in full text documents and this is done manually. And we have annotated documents for three kinds of organisms, human, yeast, and Arabidopsis. If you want to get all the results and more information, you can go to the, this web page and also you can uh, already get the annotations from the PubMed annotation system. Here, there is a sample representation of our annotations via the DuckDoc interface. And here we can see the example of the protein RABF2A from Arabidopsis that localizes in endosomes. And this is one of a specific case of functional annotation that was not present in, on Unipro. How we collected the documents? for annotation. First, we went to Uniprod, the Swiss prod actually, and for the, or, uh, for the organisms hum, uh, human gist and Arabidopsis, and we got the publications that were cited for subcellular localization. So the reviewers of, of Uniprod cited those documents because they contain information about localizations. And then from this set, we randomly sample 100 documents 50 for human, 25 for yeast, and 25 for Arabidopsis talian. As for the annotation guidelines, we were first, well, one bioinformatician, and then me, more or less a computer scientist bioinformatician, and then another guy who was computer, computer scientist. And we had an iterative process of annotating 46 documents and reviewing all the time the annotation guidelines, what we have to annotate, what not, and so on. So for example, we had simple cases of, okay, annotate long and short names, but we really wrote that down so that is uh, completely clear. And then other defining rules of our corpus, which is 
for example, on, 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 uh, protate, uh, annotate protein names only if we can find them on Uniprot, which also removes the uh, ambiguity. Good, about assessing the quality of the annotations, as Karen was saying before, so we measured the inter-annotator agreement. And we specifically did this considering uh, for if two entities match, we consider whether they match exactly, so the offsets have to be exactly the same, which is more restrictive. And also for the relations, they have to, uh, they have to be the same entities, and again, the offsets of the entities have to be the same. And then we calculated the F1 measure. Then for the remaining documents, which are the 54 documents, uh, those were annotated by two annotators, uh, repeated annotations. And the inter-annotator agreement numbers that we got were 96% for proteins, which is a very high number. But again, this was resulted from this rule that we had that only annotate proteins if we can find them on Uniprot. Before it was lower when we did not have that rule. And we have 88% uh, for locations, which is also quite high, and 80% for protein location relations. So overall, it was a long annotation process. It did take time, but I think the quality of the annotations uh, were, at the end, quite very high. OK, so once we had the corpus of annotated documents, we compared those, the protein locations, annotations to Uniprint. And we made this distinction of whether our protein locations annotations were either existing in, in, in Uniprot, or either our annotations were more detailed than Uniprot, or whether they were totally novel, so new information that was not contained on, on Uniprot. And to make this distinction more clear, here I have a snapshot of the Go ontology tree. And let's say that we annotate in our documents endosome, as the sample before, and Uniprot only has, for example, vacuolar membrane. So in that case, endosome will be a noble annotation because the, the path from here doesn't go through endosome. Let's say if uh, Uniprot has, for example, cytoplasmic part and we had endosome, then in that case that will be a more detailed annotation. Otherwise, it will be an existing annotation that was, that was already on Uniprot. And as for the results, on this table, for the horizontal rows, I, we have the results for the organisms. And then the vertical columns, we have this, this is a section of existing, or more detailed, or novel. And then this subdivision of yes and no was whether if the protein location information that we found, whether it was, whether was present on a paper that was cited on Uniprot for, for this protein, yes or no. And we have. This a striking number of, well, these this are the total number of protein locations that we have, the sum of it. And this will be the, what we say that are novel annotations or, or more detailed uh, information. And also, if you, uh, you can see that for the novel annotations, most of them, were compare, compared to the existing ones, uh, you see that the number of yes and no is more or less the same or even bigger for no. So that can give us an insight of how Uniprot curators annotate their, their documents. And I think their perspective, so our perspective from NLP people is that we go, we get a document and we try to annotate everything like compre com comprehensively. However, an Uniprot guy, curator would say, okay, I have this protein, I'm gonna try to find all the information about the protein, but if there are other information about other proteins in that document, I don't care. And I also don't have to tell other my curators and so on. So I think that that distinction is quite important. And that's why maybe they miss some information. Good, so for summary, um, for, for an hour, our, our annotations, we found 46% of those were novel or more detailed information. We, we, with that information, we can enrich the Unipro database. And now you can find the annotations from the Locktec corpus in our own JSON format, in BioC, and also in pub annotation. And some discussion, I think this is a scenario where the annotations for NLP people are 
they can be uh, they are likely extendable to other databases or other kinds of annotations, and also to help the effort the the the, the cost of annotation uh, of annotation those annotations could also be done automatically by text mining methods, and I guess for that it it would be very important to have this kind of central repository where everybody can agree on to push those annotations and then everybody can consume those. So thank you so much. And uh, again, I, I repeat my gratitude to Jin Dong for, for his invitation and for the great organization of, of the week where we had a good combination of working time and social, socialization time. So yeah, thank you. <laughs>